Hi. So this video is about the primary cause of uh, both thyroid inflammation as well as uh, Hashimoto's. And I will take you through the steps of how inflammation begins in the thyroid or thyroid cells, how it progresses, and the eventual uh, outcome, which is uh, the destruction of thyroid cells due to th this inflammation and the release of uh, various um, contents from inside thyroid cells and this activates the immune system. It's very simple. This is basic medical physiology uh, found in any medical text uh, as well as some research from different parts of the world. So uh, here we go on explanation of the cause of Hashimoto's. So this is where we get into the, um, the origin of Hashimoto's and I think with the foundation of the last uh, presentation that this should pretty much uh, be pretty easy to understand. The primary nutrient which the thyroid cells require is iodide. So what happens with an iodide deficiency? What, what goes on if the, if the um, thyroid cells do not receive this primary nutrient? So there's other nutrients as well needed by the thyroid. Uh, selenium, zinc, and iron, but the primary one and one which uh, people are most deficient in is iodide. So with an iodide deficiency, of course, we have the low production of thyroid hormones. Thyroid hormone production begins to decline because thyroid cells do not have the nutrients that they need to make hormones. They go down, and as you know from the last presentation, thyroid stimulating hormone is going to go up, trying to stimulate the thyroid to make more hormones. And as you know, one of the actions of TSH is to increase the production of hydrogen peroxide within thyroid cells. So when thyroid hormones are low, primarily because of iodine, iodide deficiency, TSH will increase. And this continual stimulation of TSH will keep the levels of hydrogen peroxide inside the thyroid cells increased. If in the early stages, if you started providing <clears throat> those nutrients, iodide, selenium, zinc, and iron, then of course the iodine is present, thyroid hormone production increases, and TSH goes down. But with this deficiency, which is um, very, very prevalent around the world, TSH is going to stay elevated because of a lack of thyroid hormone production. And what happens over years and decades is this inflammation starts to happen to the thyroid cells because of the hydrogen peroxide. Inflammation and irritation, and that goes on for a while. A person can have an inflamed thyroid uh, gland and not have Hashimoto's. But eventually, the cells in the thyroid, some of them start to uh, destruct, and they'll release their contents. The enzyme thyroperoxidase will be released into the circulation, into the area around the thyroid gland. The protein thyroglobulin will also be released. You'll also have released thyroid hormones. That means that when that cell, those cells break apart, now suddenly the person experiences, um, sometimes pretty severe, hyperthyroid symptoms because of the release of sudden release of excess or bursts of these thyroid hormones. And also the hydrogen peroxide is released. And there's studies that show that hydrogen peroxide is um, one substance that really activates uh, white blood cells to come into the area. Um, and when they get engaged and they find thyroglobulin, which really should not be in the circulation, they find the enzyme thyroperoxidase, um, th they're activated. And this is when uh, the antibodies for the enzyme, antibodies for the protein thyroglobulin will start to increase. And you now have an autoimmune condition. These the enzyme and protein should not be in the circulation. They should be contained within the cell. So what is the cause of Hashimoto's? Uh, sorry, what is the cause of Hashimoto's thyroiditis? The itis being uh, referring to inflammation of the thyroid. So the cause of Hashimoto's thyroiditis is due to the increased production 
of hydrogen peroxide causing inflammation of the thyroid and eventually destruction of some of the cells of the thyroid gland. And what's the cause of the increased hydrogen peroxide? It's due to the elevated TSH that's stimulating that cell to make more and more continuous or constant levels of hydrogen peroxide, excess hydrogen peroxide. And the cause of the elevated TSH it's low thyroid hormones. You remember that seesaw effect. Thyroid hormone production drops, TSH goes up. And what's the cause of low thyroid hormone production? I think you know the answer. It's a lack of thyroid nutrients, especially iodide. So if we have a decrease in the availability of iodide, the thyroid cells cannot make thyroid hormones, so they decline. When they go down, then TSH increases, which leads to an increase in the production of hydrogen peroxide inside thyroid cells, leading to thyroid inflammation. So simple. So this is a very basic understanding of how inflammation begins and ends often with Hashimoto's. It's an epidemic right now in in the world and um, there are many many problems that are, people are suffering from because of a nutrient deficiency. Um, I think you can understand now after this presentation why I consider Hashimoto's not to be a disease. Um, with the underlying uh, problem being primarily a lack of iodide or a lack of thyroid hormone production due to, due to the lack of various nutrients, um, we categorize this as a disease because we don't really understand all that much about autoimmune conditions. But now if we can reverse that inflammation, if we can help to repair the thyroid cells, uh, we can also help to reduce the uh, activity or the antibodies that have formed from the uh, thyroperoxidase enzyme and also from the um, thyroglobulin protein. So again, this is a condition as far as I'm concerned, not a disease. So. As you can see, the most important uh, part of treatment would be to reduce the inflammation by reducing TSH. There are other nutrients which are very important for reducing inflammation, and that's the subject of the next video.